In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I send thousands of personalized emails every single month. Because in 2025, one of the best ways to stand out with cold email is by sending messages that are actually relevant. However, doing this manually would take way too much time. So we automate most of the process using Clay. And today I'm gonna to walk you through exactly how to enrich the data that you have, personalize your messages, and then send them at scale. This way you can stand out in the inbox without having to spend too much time doing it. And this isn't based on theory. This is the exact process that I use to book hundreds of calls for me and my clients every single month. And and the first step of this process is uploading the leads that you actually have. Now, if you don't know how to build a list of leads, you can watch the video on my channel walking you through exactly how to do just that. But for the sake of this one, we'll start with a full list of prospects. And to start, we're gonna throw it right into Clay. Now, if you don't know what Clay is, it's essentially an all-in-one sales platform. You can use it to find new leads to reach out to, enrich leads that you already have with AI or advanced data scraping, and you can even use it to find email and LinkedIn profiles. But in this case, we'll be using it to find data, and we'll be using that data to personalize our emails. So let's get this into Clay. All right, so now that we've uploaded our CSV into Clay, we've mapped the headers, we're going to want to verify our leads because what most people do is they end up personalizing data for all of their prospects before verifying them and they end up spending hundreds of dollars on personalizations for leads that they're not even really able to send to. So as you can see here, I've run million verifier and then I've filtered the lead list for those that are verified. So this way we're able to use Clay to our full advantage and find those that are actually worth spending the time personalizing. But either way, finding these leads and verifying them is just the beginning because now we actually have to get the data that we want to use for personalization. And in 2025, this might actually be one of the most controversial parts of cold email because a lot of people think any sort of personalization will work. But the reality is there's good personalization and there's bad personalization. Bad personalization is stuff like complimenting a prospect on a recent promotion, basically anything that is irrelevant. Well, good personalization is calling out something like the industry that they work within or recent case studies or basically anything that is actually relevant to the message that you're sending. So what we want to do is use Clay to find stuff that is relevant to what we're actually sending. And the best part of all of this is we only really have to set it up once. So here's how. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do once you have everything loaded up is open up an instance of Clayjent. So if you're not familiar with Clayjent, Clayjent is essentially Clay's AI web researcher that allows you to either pull information from a given web page or go out into the internet and search for data given a particular set of instructions. The nice thing with Clay is you don't really need to be an AI prompting wizard to be able to get good results here because they have a prompt generation tool which essentially just allows you to tell you or to tell it what you want um, and then it'll give you some pretty good results. So what we're going to want to do, luckily in this situation we know where the data is that we want. We have a column here that's got a bunch of information on the prospects that we're going to be looking at. So in this case I'm going to go to this website. And the reason why I'm gonna do this is to find out exactly how the information that we want is formatted. So when we're creating our prompt, we can tell uh, Clayjent exactly where to find this info and exactly what it's gonna look like. So if we open up this page here, this is essentially a description of a partner at a VC fund um, from VC Sheet. And what we want to find is this data here. So sectors that their funds invest in. Um, so that's gonna be our first personalization. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is probably pull one to three of these sectors. So any of these ones here. I'm going to, now that I see the data, I'm gonna probably prompt it to avoid things like generalist or enterprise because those are just less specific and again, less relevant. But if you use things like AI, e-commerce or FinTech, that's obviously gonna seem a little bit more relevant. As I'm looking through here, another personalization that might be nice is notable investments. So those would be the types of companies or the exact companies that they've invested in before. Because obviously if we say like, you know, if we could help you find more companies like Clary or Tecton, that would obviously resonate pretty well with them because they're familiar. Um, um, you could probably use some of this other stuff too, but I find if you get too crazy with the personalization and add, you know, three, four, five bits of personalization, sometimes it can come off a little weird, I guess. So I think like just enough for it to be relevant, just enough to show that you did a little bit of homework is kind of that sweet spot. So again, now that we know exactly how this is framed, we're going to go back into clay and essentially create our prompt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask it to go to... BC sheet profile. So that's again, this column here, which has our data. And cause again, we're going to use these in copy. So we want it, you know, as plain as possible. So once this is set, essentially you're just going to hit generate and it's going to sculpt your prompt. All right, cool. So we've got something pretty solid here. Um, I think as much as you're going to be tempted to go in and try and like optimize a bunch of stuff, I would just jump in, look for any red flags. Um, and then what you're going to want to do 
is pretty much just run the prompt. I find the best way to get good results with these is just coming up with the prompt, running it, seeing what the result is, and then making changes after you get the result rather than trying to do it all ahead of time. The one thing that I will mention though is that for this here, you're probably going to want to switch to GPT-4 on Mini just because it's the cheapest that is available right now. And if you have an open API key or an open AI API key, I would include that as well. So as you can see, I've got mine loaded up here. And what that does is allow you to use your open AI um, billing and credits instead of actually using clay, which ends up being a little bit more expensive. So we've got that set up. And then what I'm gonna do is save and run 10 rows. Again, just to see a little bit about what we get as a return and then we can redo the prompt and you know make adjustments based on how we want things to come out on the back end now if you want to send thousands of personalized emails per month without having to spend hours learning how to use clay you can book a call via the first link below we've built a system that allows us to send personalized emails at scale and we've used it to book thousands of sales calls for our clients over the past 12 months just like relay partners we help book 42 calls in 30 days so if you want to see if we can do the same for you just book a call below and we'll chat soon all right cool so i have got that back and I made a few little tweaks. So now essentially the industries are shared in each one of these individually. Um, I'm probably gonna add two of them as columns. So we're gonna go industry one and then for the second one, we're gonna go industry two. I probably won't include industry three because there's gonna be situations where some of the data points only have two. And truthfully, I think two points is enough for personalization. Um, so we're going to take a look at that. And as you can see here, you can already see some of the number twos are actually missing. So I probably could have fixed this in the prompt and I could probably go back, but because I've already run the data for every single one of the leads, what I'm going to do is use the formulas tab or tool. Um, so essentially what you're going to want to do is insert formula. If you're not familiar with formulas in clay, essentially what it does is allow you to manipulate data without having to use uh, Clayton or like API keys or anything like that from any of your other tools. And it's pretty much zero cost. So you can go in and change things around and it's pretty much just kind of like a, a prompt based type of thing. So essentially what we're going to do here is ask it to one, put the two industries together. If there's only one industry, we're just going to include one. And then we want to make sure that everything's in like sentence case format, just so it fits nicely into our email. So what you're going to want to do with this sort of thing is, is kind of determine what text you want to include in the email itself so in your email sequencer and what you want to be included in the variable if it's going to be the same for all of them you could probably just include it in the variable if you want to mix it up and change things around you could probably do it in the sequencer um but yeah let me not include this for now and then we'll say if there is only or if industry two is blank only include industry one and then these are all formatted pretty decently so i don't think we need to add anything about changing it to sentence case but um yeah we'll see how this goes so we're going to generate this formula cool so you can see the output here and you can already see there's some issues so obviously like in this case here we only had industry two so what we're going to want to do so if one of the columns is blank include just one so let's see how that goes awesome and i'm really not sure what these empty spots are we'll have to look into that after because obviously we don't want any blanks in our emails um, but i'm going to say output is correct for now actually yeah no that's good yeah i think that's totally fine cool now the second personalization that we want to pull is going to be those that they've recently invested in so we're going to do the same thing basically hide this Basically, we're gonna pull up another instance of Clayton and we're gonna do the same thing. We go back, we say notable investments is what we were gonna to want to pull. So go to BCC profile and pull the notable investments. If there are two, include both with the word and in between. So this is almost like us compensating for the, you know, mistake we made on the previous prompt. Um, and then if there are no notable investments list or maybe we'll try something like that. Generate, again, you can see here it's suggesting Clagent Neon and it's gonna be three credits per row. Just make sure you change that to 4 mini and then ensure that you have your API key so you're not using credits or you'll end up like me and and burn through all your credits. Uh, so again, for a mini API key set, we're gonna look through this real quick. I'm gonna save run 10 rows. All right, so I had to make a few tweaks. 
again, this is a bit of an iterative process, so sometimes it's gonna come up with some weird things. Sometimes you have to make some changes. What we're gonna wanna do is again, format this data so that it's good for your copy. The one thing that I'm noticing in particular is that a lot of these have links in them. So like 401kplans.com, .ai, we don't want any of these in there. So essentially what I'm gonna ask the formula to do is one, format this, um, and two, basically just leverage um, the formulas to pull out any sort of links and just make it 401k plans kind of thing. Another thing that I didn't mention is that um, because the last prompt that I ran didn't pull enough information, there was a lot of people that were missing the notable investments. I actually had uh, Clayton go to their website and try and find that information on Google. So instead of using the VC sheet profile link that actually had that profile in a couple listed, I shifted the prompt around so that it was just going out into the internet, searching Google and trying to find basically notable companies that they've invested in by using both their name and their domain. And as you can see here, the results were obviously a lot better. So jumping in, we're gonna add that formula again, basically say, I want you to format recent portfolio investment. We want the company names. If there are two company names, include the word and in between. If there is one company name, do not. Also, if there a URL listed, instead of a company name, remove the part that makes it a link like thought com or dot ai cool now let's see what we can get out of this it's funny you can kind of see how this ends up being like a crazy iterative process right here look nothing came through an output so output is wrong and then this is kind of a good example of what you can do in the situation that it's not working so we're going to say decagon and charta health cool awesome that looks good so it looks like they fixed it you're always going to want to do a quick fly by, just scroll through, make sure there's nothing that is a red flag. Awesome, I think this looks really good. So now all that's left is to get these emails sent out. But before we do that, we wanna make sure all of the prospects have emails and that all the variables are set. Because without this step, we'd obviously be sending a bunch of emails with blank variables, which would definitely hurt our reputation once the campaigns are live. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to export this from Clay, download it as a CSV, and then we're gonna to wanna to jump into our email sequencer. So in this case, we're using email bison, we're gonna to want to import, and then we're gonna to wanna to map our variables. So the most important ones are gonna be first name. I'm going to include, so industry is gonna be combined industry. We're not gonna import this. We're not going to import this. You wanna make sure that the email is correct. So AI case study is going to be formatted portfolio investments. We're gonna remove this. We're gonna remove this. Cool. So the biggest thing is basically first name, email, um, we want to bring in LinkedIn just for some later on uh, enrichments. We're going to want the AI variable, so that's combined industry. And then we're going to want the AI case study, so the portfolio investment in this case. Then we're going to finish mapping. We're going to name this list, so I'm just going to name it the same as what I have the campaign called above. And then we're going to import. Cool. So most of the leads went in. There's going to be a couple that didn't, which is typical. And then what you're going to want to do is pull those variables into your email sequence. So we're going to do something along the lines of first name. Uh, curious, are you still looking for investments in the... And then we want to pull that industry personalization. The industry, let's say sector. Again, the point of this first line is basically just to ask them a question that we know is true, just to maintain relevance. So like, again, we're getting them to say yes via the first line. And then in the second line, we'll say something along the lines of, if so, may have an interesting way to, let's say help you get in early on opportunities similar to and then we'll list the companies that they had worked with in the past. So that is going to be, I believe it was prospects like, and then we're just going to drop the signature. Again, this isn't necessarily a video on email copy, but the idea here is that we're using the personalization here to get them to say, yes, we know this answer is true. Then we build curiosity with the second line by talking about an interesting opportunity that we have to basically accomplish something that we know is going to be desirable for them. If these are noticeable investment opportunities that they've done in the past, we know they're going to want more of those. So again, we're just alluding to a way that we can accomplish that for them. 
And then the biggest thing is going to be just double checking the variables, making sure everything came through properly. So we're gonna go preview body. So as you can see here, it didn't actually come through properly. All right, so I just had to make a couple tweaks just to make sure that this worked properly. Um, obviously, this isn't always gonna map perfectly, but you can see here the personalizations have dropped into the copy. So Dylan, curious, are you still looking for investments in the FinTech and AI sector? If so, I may have an interesting way to help you get in early on opportunities like Zango and Range. So that's exactly how we send hundreds of thousands of personalized emails using Clay. But that's only a small part of booking calls via cold email. So if you want to see the entire strategy that we use to book 21 calls in 21 days for one of our clients, you can watch this video and I'll see you there.